Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.13, an Eagle Dynamics AH64D Apache module. Welcome to tutorial 6, Laser Hellfire, and today we're going to do this tutorial with a human CPG. Say hello, John. Hello! <laughs> so, uh, in this case, we're going to basically do everything from the pilot's point of view, uh, but John is going to operate the CPG controls and call out what he's doing as he does them. Uh, the primary method of employing uh, the laser hellfire, the AGM-114K, uh, is using the TADS and uh, self-lasing. It is, of course, possible to do off-board lasing. We're not going to cover that today. So today we'll cover the CPG using the TADS and our own aircraft doing the lasing. We'll then cover lock-on before launch, lock-on after launch, and rapid fire modes. If we look at uh, our weapons page just now, I'll bring it up on the left hand side, you can see that we're currently carrying eight laser hellfires. It is possible to carry up to 16 uh, as, as a full load, uh, but uh, today we'll just carry the eight because that's a bit cumbersome and it becomes difficult to fly the helicopter at that stage. Yeah, I'm currently sitting in a hover. Um, if you're actually under fire or doing kind of a, a more realistic employment, you probably wouldn't do this unless you're in some kind of safe position. Uh, but we're going to do it for simplicity of demonstrating how this works today. Um, yeah, you probably want to do something like fly some kind of a circuit. So, uh, if I jump down and I've got the, the weapons page up, I'll bring up the missile format so that I have all of my settings there. That's looking good. We're going to go into the FCR and we're going to turn on C-scope. This means that I'll get shot markers showing up in my helmet-mounted display, my IADs, which uh, is going to make things much easier to follow. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to bring up the vid page, and I'm going to choose TADS. And if I do that, I can actually see exactly what the CPG is doing with their uh, with their TADS. And if I choose TADS at the top right here, I even get their symbology, and I can uh, adjust my zoom level and so on. So that's kind of funky. Um, so uh, let me go over what we've got here just now. I've currently got wep uh, Waypoint 1 selected, uh, my sensor is the pilot's helmet-mounted display, and my acquisition source is currently fixed. Uh, now, we're going to have targets out in front of us. Uh, have they spawned in just yet, John? Have a look. Yes, hmm. looks like we've got some vehicles out on the range. Excellent, excellent, because we uh, we have a script to, to actually deal with that. So, uh, I think we're, we're pretty much ready to go. you got John here... Uh, Yes, bring up the targets. So uh, we're going to get set up just now, and then you can rejoin us when we will demonstrate the first method of employment, which is lock on before launch. Okay, uh, you rejoin us. We're now about to demonstrate a lock on before launch. Uh, in this mode, uh, John is going to target using the TADS, and he's going to fire and continuously fire the laser before we pull the trigger. Uh, something that I'm going to do just to get some visibility of what he's doing exactly is I'm going to change my acquisition source here to TADS uh, and I will now get um, the, uh, the little cross, the dotted cross, up on my IHADS which gives me a very nice um, kind of bit of situational awareness about where he's looking. I've got my right hand display set up so that I'm viewing the TADS in fact so I get a really good view of uh, the target and on the left hand side I have the weapon page. And uh, now we're ready for, for John to go ahead and get set up. Brilliant. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my LRFD, which is my laser rangefinder designator, return from first to last. What this will mean is, is that when I laser target, um, if there's any obstructions between me and the target, potentially if there was a target behind a tree line, uh, the laser return is not going to be scattered or as easily as scattered. It means that if it's set to last, which is usually a hard target, uh, it's going to give me that accurate ranging and accurate designation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my target. Luckily we're in a, a relatively uh, stable hover. Uh, we've got two targets here, which looks like some sort of uh, uh, truck and what looks like some sort of uh, Hummer or a APC. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assess the target situation and look for anything that's most dangerous. So first things first, we're not seeing anything here which is going to probably shoot back. So to make sure that the target isn't obscured by smoke after we hit it, I'm probably going to shoot at the target furthest back. First thing I'll do is I'll start lasing that target to get a range. You'll see this because we'll get these diamond shapes on the outside corners, which is telling us that the laser rangefinder is firing. At the bottom of the TADS, it will provide us uh, a ranging, which is currently just below 5 kilometers, which is 4,800. Uh, 
once we get the target and we blazed, the first thing we'll do is we'll use the uh, auto track IAT button and what that will do is that will produce an auto track. If deep hack for instance was then to start maneuvering, this pad is now locked to this target. It, it's, it's very similar to a point track system in the, uh, any kind of TGP that you'd be used to. Um, obviously if you do break line of sight of the targets moving, gets obstructed, this will eventually degrade and you'll lose this track. But what this will do, this will just mean that you don't have to worry about, you know, slewing around, losing where you're going to go. Another thing that's always worth doing is you laser the target and you're going to hit the target store switch and that will put a target point down. This will mean that it's now positioned into the TSD. If it's just a reference point, if you were to lose a target, again, for you to maneuver, and it's generally a really good practice to do to make sure that you've got everything stored and you can always come back to the target if you were to lose it. So we're now ready to fire. First thing I'm going to do is make sure my master arm is on, which it is, and we're going to use the weapon action switch or was switch to missile. This is the left hand grip for the, uh, for the CPG. And you'll now see some symbology. This stage, what I'll now do is I'll ensure that I've got what's called a big box, which means that the Hellfire, when I'm lasing, is seeing the the, the laze. Uh, this is this big box indicates that you know we've got a good track, it can see the target, and it's going to be able to engage in a low ball. Once we're ready, we'll confirm with the uh, pilot and say we're ready to fire. Once the pilot's ready, he's going to confirm, and we're going to call a rifle. Okay, ready to fire. Rifle. Okay, we have missile launch indicated at the bottom right of the TADS, and now we have uh, the time of flight. We also get a reminder to laze the target. We've, we now have a shot marker showing up on the, the IHADS as well. Actually, it's also showing up on the TADS, and that is Shaq. Good kill, yeah. sir. Thank you very much. And IAT will now degrade, and at this point you can actually use the OTE F or OFS switch, and it will you know, remove that as a target track. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, and as you can see, that there was basically no pilot input required there other than the pilot would need to make sure that the helicopter is aligned, but we started off with the helicopter being aligned with the target. Brilliant. And if we want to repeat that uh, again, just to give you another uh, kind of repeat of the situation, we can do this again. Again, I will get the target lined up, quick lays, 4.6 kilometers, Put, put the big box. Down, put the big box. Gonna put a target point down. You'll see at the bottom of the tads T08. We're gonna then image track, and then when we're ready, we're gonna do, uh, proclaim ready to fire. Yep, we are ready. And then call a rifle. Six point eight o'clock. Searching. That's off the rail and tracking. Two, one, and Shaq. Good kill. And uh, that's pretty much the entire setup for lock on before launch. You can see we've got our shot markers showing up here. These are two killed targets. We still have those targets showing up on the TSD. I can go back to the weapon page and we can see what missile we'd fire next. Another uh, kind of top uh, tip is that the coordinates. Uh, pay, a sub page is available directly from the weapons page in missile format mode which is kind of handy. I can go to coordinates uh, and I could page this over here and I can see those targets that we were uh, that uh, John just stored that we then engaged uh, and again we've got shot markers showing up in the IHADs so we can see which ones we've already killed. Well <laughs> hopefully killed I guess uh, you know, what it's doing is it's storing the location that John lazed before he pulled the trigger to to fire the missile. There's no guarantee that that target is now dead. Same shows up in the TADS. We've got those shot markers showing up there. Uh, do they also show up in the FCR? No. No. So we don't get them in the FCR, but we get them in the TSD, in the TADS, and in the IHADS. So that is the entire process for lock-on before launch. It's fairly simple. We need to make sure that the CPG has the target in his sights. He's pulled the, uh, the laser ranger to the second D10, am I right in saying, John? Should be second D10, yeah. Second D10, and then he's fired the missile. The the the, the pilot also has the option of pulling the trigger uh, to fire the Hellfire, uh, but generally the CPG is perfectly capable of doing it themselves. Alrighty, we're going to get reset, and we will get ready to demonstrate lock-on after launch. 
Okay, and that's us reset now. We're going to demonstrate lock-on after launch. As the name implies, uh, we're going to fire the Hellfire without lasing the target, and then we're going to start lasing it at some point after. Uh, this, of course, would also uh, work for a remote designation if you have a, another aircraft lasing on your behalf. Something that I'm going to demonstrate in the meantime, though, is the ability for the CPG to use the pilot's helmet-mounted sight as acquisition source. So, uh, yeah, CPG, I've noticed a target down here on the road. Can you slave to me? Copy that. What I'll be doing at this stage is my acquisition source on either my weapons page or my TSD. I'll set that to PHS, which is Pilot Helmet Sight. Then, once you've seen the target, I'll declare slaved. Yep, that's it. That's the target. Be slaved. Okay, I can now move my head again, and we can see his cross is on the target. If I look down uh, at my displays here, I'm actually going to clear my ads for a moment. We can see on the TADS he's got the target, and on the TSD we also we see a line and a cross. So we, we can confirm that he's definitely looking at the target we thought he was. So that's, that's good. We are confirmed on target. Now when it comes to the weapon format page, there's nothing further... Uh, that John needs to change here for us to do a lock-on after launch. The, the, the major difference really is that he's going to pull the laser trigger to the second detent at some stage after launch. There are some prompts that we're going to see in the TADS view, uh, and, and one of them is a reminder to laser the target. That actually is telling you when you're already too late. So you, you probably only only want to wait a few seconds and then pull the trigger. Uh, another thing we'll mention is the trajectories. We've been fi making uh, shots in direct mode. Uh, direct mode doesn't really loft much. Um, it goes up 50 feet and it reaches the peak of that uh, climb 250 feet in front of the helicopter. So you're not going to clear much of uh, uh, an obstruction with that. If I click here, you'll see we also have uh, settings for low and high. Low will make a, a climb to 500 feet, and it'll reach the peak of that climb a thousand feet out in front of the helicopter. So you could probably hide uh, somewhat behind something. This is probably less applicable, really, if you're going to laze the target yourself, because you probably won't have visibility. Uh, but if you're using the FCR, uh, or if you have off-board lasing, then this could be handy. And then we have high mode, and in high mode we're going to loft up to 1,300 feet, and it'll reach that peak at 2,000 feet in front of the helicopter. Uh, but I think today, John, we're going to keep it in direct, yeah? Yeah, roger that. Alrighty, and uh, you're clear to proceed. Roger that. So the first thing's first I'm going to do, I'm going to laze the target, and I'm going to store this target, like we did with the uh, low ball. This is produced uh, target 09. At this stage, to make sure that the, uh, the const firing constraints are correct, we're going to set our acquisition source, which would be, you can set this on the TSD, and we can set acquisition, and go to the coordinates page, page over to where we've stored target 09, hit the MFD button to the left of that, which is now going to set that as the acquisition source. What this means is, is that Hellfire is queued to that position as for its firing constraints. Um, this means that, say, for instance, if we were to be firing out those constraints, the Hellfire may not see the target lays by the time it reaches it, just so to ensure that it, the capture, the proper laser capture, occurs at the right time. So, what I'll now do also is I'll direct to, as, as a CPG, uh, as on the route for the pilot. And the reason we're going to do that is this is going to allow him to see in his iHads where the target is, and it will give him a ranging uh, to that target um, to best set up that, that shot. Um, this is not this is not required to do a, a low angle shot, but this does really help the, tar uh, the pilot get everything aligned and for the best ability to hit that target. At this stage, everything's pretty much the same. CPG doesn't have to change anything. Make sure you've got the Hellfires WASD. And what you would now do, I'm going to do a quick laser once more again, just to make sure it's roughly in constraints. And we're going to hit a uh, the, the missile release button, or the, the trigger, and call a rifle. Got missile now, launch, and a reminder to laser, laser target pilot. one there at the bottom right. Three, two, one, shack. That's a good hit. And yep, we've we've lost our uh, our track there as well. Did you cancel that, or did it lose it itself? I cancelled it myself, but you'll immediately see it start to degrade as soon as the target's been destroyed. Yeah, nice, really good. Uh, and yet again, we've got a shot marker showing up on the iHads. I can see that John's already moved to 
another target there. Uh, I've also got shot marker on TADS, and I've got shot marker on TSD. So we can pretty ha be pretty happy that we've uh, executed uh, a good strike on that target. Alrighty, uh, so that's us. We've demonstrated lock-on before launch and lock-on after launch. Lastly, we're going to demonstrate rapid fire of the Hellfires, and what this allows us to do is to have more than one missile in flight uh, with the correct amount of spacing and actually move the TADs from one target to the next as they are destroyed. We'll demonstrate this with two targets today uh, using the multi-target track, just to be extra fancy, and uh, we'll do lock-on before launch just to make things easier. So uh, I, I can see that uh, John has his TADs looking off in the distance there. Uh, I'm going to focus down on his TADs and we'll, we'll hand over to you, John. Brilliant. So I'm going to look around for some targets here in flare mode. Luckily, what we found here are two fantastic uh, targets of opportunity. These have a close spacing, which makes a rapid fire um, uh, engagement, you know, a lot easier. So you can see these guys are a little bit small in the flare. I'm gonna switch over to the TV mode. You can see we've got two targets here. We've got a looks like some sort of uh, APC and a truck. Um, what we'll now do is we'll start using the IAT or MTT, so that's image auto track and multi-target track modes. First button we're going to do is we're going to select the target in the background here, this truck. Put our cursor over it, just give it a quick laze to get us a, a, a ranging solution, and we're looking at about 8 kilometers. First button we're going to use is the auto track offset switch, IAT. This will then put this as target 1. We're now going to slew over to our second target, the APC. Hit the button again, IAT. This is going to set this as target 2. Now, we've got a, a, a section of controls, and these are called the right hand grip multi-target track promote we've got forward and aft if we use this we can quickly switch between target one and target two this makes it much easier to kind of engage these two targets uh, especially if we need to switch over when lasing and hitting the target so we're going to go back to target for this engagement just for simplicity we're going to use lock on before launch but there is really no reason where we couldn't also do this lock on after launch so, One thing to note here is that we are getting Ballistic Limit showing up in the bottom of the TADs. That's the TADs telling us that we might be out of range. However, we, we actually have confidence that we can make this shot, so we're going to continue. Absolutely. So, we we'll start lasing the first target. I'm clear to fire. Ready to fire? Yeah, go ahead. Rifle. Missile launch at the bottom right. We have a time of flight, and we're looking for the message, fire missiles. That lets us know we can fire the second missile. There. Rifle. And we're just waiting for the first one to impact now before we do that slew to the second. Oh, we, we, we have, yeah, we have further uh, fire missiles messages letting us know that we could fire multiple missiles here. Yep, yeah, on to the second. And we have the time of flight for the second missile there. Oh, it actually hit a little bit early. And there we go. Good job, John. Thank you, sir. Alrighty. So, yeah, that, that is the, the complete demonstration of, of doing rapid fire. Now, um, you saw that we got more than one fire missiles message there. Depending on your distance to the target, you could probably fire... I don't know, the distance we were at, we could have maybe done three, maybe four, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, it's possible to do a few of those. Uh, and what uh, you know, as before, we've got our shot markers. They're all showing up on there. Uh, we have them in the TADs, and we have them in the TSD. So we can see exactly uh, what targets we've actually been engaging there. And uh, yeah, that is basically a complete demonstration of using the AGM-114K Laser Hellfire with a human CPG. We demonstrated lock-on before launch, lock-on after launch, and rapid fire. Thank you very much for, for joining me today, John, and, and demonstrating. Uh, say, say goodbye to the nice people. Cheers, guys. Alrighty. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Fly safe, and I'll see you next time.